So it, it sounds like your friends come to you a lot when they're struggling <laughs> with their decision making. How has your research influenced your own decision making patterns? So very much, uh, you know, one, one thing about my friends, if you, if you start studying decision making, your friends always think that you're doing an experiment on them. So no matter, no matter what happens, right, people come to dinner, they always think like, you know, what's the catch here? What's going on? Is this wine really this wine or is they change the label and, you know, so on. But in terms of my own decisions, uh, I would say that there are kind of three types of decisions. There's the little decisions, the big decisions, and the repeated decisions or habitual decisions. And on the little decisions, I don't think I've changed that much. Right? It's, it's a lot of effort to change all the little decisions. I do notice things, right? So I go and I say, oh, isn't it fun that, there, that you know, there's a medium coffee that is this big? Or uh, isn't it fun that they're putting a really expensive item on the menu? So I, I notice those things, but often they, they work on me just as well, right? It's a little bit like visual illusions. If you notice visual illusion, it doesn't mean you, you're not susceptible to them. So that's, that's one category. The, the category of big decisions... Those I think I'm better on. And, and I think I'm better on that because I understand a little bit better all the biases that would come into them. I think about them more carefully and, and I think about what would maximize my well-being. Buying a house is an example. So, so when you buy a house, um, there's some standard decisions, that, mistakes that happen to people. So, so one is what is called anchoring. Anchoring is the idea that the, your previous decision influences your next decision. So if you bought an expensive house, you're likely to buy an expensive house again. So um, imagine that you have two people who are moving to Pittsburgh. One of them is moving from LA, very expensive housing market. One of them is moving from some uh, small town in Texas where the housing market is very cheap. And let's imagine those people have the same level of wealth and so on. What would happen to those people is that the LA person, everything will look so cheap to them and they'll buy a very big house. The Texas person, everything would look crazy expensive for them and so on, even though they have the same financial resources. So for example, when I moved to Durham from Boston, uh, everything looked very cheap to me, but I knew about this bias and I could try to overcome it. I would try to say, okay, let's not focus on pricing. Let's think about what do I want from a quality of life. Or another example with housing. We know that if people live close to a grocery store, they actually are healthier. Because if you live far away from a grocery store and you make your trip to the grocery store only once in a while, you buy less fresh fruit and vegetables and you eat more frozen meals and that's very unhealthy. If you live in a short distance to, to a grocery store, you end up eating uh, much, much more healthily. So, so you can see how even understanding what influences our decision can, can make your decision better. So that's, that's on that side. And then we have the middle decision, which we said, what about repeated decisions? And repeated decisions could be little decisions, but they show up a lot. And here too, I think knowing something about decision making could be very helpful. Uh, so for example, um, if you think about the temptation of overeating, right? The temptation of having a muffin in breakfast or stuff like that. If it's a one-time thing, you might fail. But if you think about it as what habits do I want to create? Now you can say, let me work on this habit. Let me strengthen the habit. Let me create a process from it and so on. And now you could take away bad habits and create good habits. So uh, just as an example for myself, I, I basically uh, moved to a habit of no breakfast. Very tempting to eat uh, a croissant with, with your morning coffee. Uh, you spend some time in Europe. You think that's the right thing to do. Uh, not, not the most healthy thing in the world. I changed that. But, but not just did I change it, I, I did something else. Um, I actually love espressos. And, and what I do is I, I use the, the, the morning uh, espresso um, to create another activity in the office. So my usual ritual is I come in, I make my uh, espresso, I get to my desk, and I start working on something thoughtful. I don't open email, I don't open a browser. I work on something that I actually want to make progress on today. And, and that ends up being an incredibly useful thing. Because if you say, you know, how many hours of productive work do we get a day? We all have to admit not enough. A lot of our days hijacked by all kinds of things, including social media. 
So I, I not only just drink coffee and not have something, I use that coffee as a reward for something else that I want to do. So for habitual decisions, I, I think very carefully about the environment and about temptation and what habit do I want and how they build on each other. And I try very much to create a system around that. Yeah, I think everyone focuses on motivation, willpower, mm -hmm. and they don't realize that creating habits are actually more helpful to eliminate those decisions entirely. So the morning coffee, you now don't have to go scrambling through the kitchen to figure out what you're going to cook for breakfast. The coffee is now tied to something pleasurable for you and you avoid the meal altogether. But imagine every morning having to get up and say, well, am I going to have an orange today or oh, that croissant looks good. Even that little decision saps your willpower and ultimately leads to you overeating. Yeah, and, and it's, it's, this is kind of the creating rituals and habits. And you made a decision at some point, right? Or may, you made some, some sequence, you build it over time, what you do. But once you've made it, you, you're not re-examining it. And that's, that's a way to take small decisions and to say, instead of making the small decision every time, let's create a ritual, let's create a habit, let's create the repeated behavior, and that would help us control our behavior. It will take away from the making lots of different decisions and making it one big decision of what ritual to have, and then it will self-enforce itself.